times like where you have tests. Um, I didn't have tests in Yeshiva, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't. You know, we would have like you know the final you know the final parts of the semester sort of would never connect, and it was a real challenge. It was very very difficult. A lot of the students that were at the time going to Brooklyn College like were kind of you know would never sort of show up in the base matterish, and they were frustrated with that. Um, but I made it like I was. It was really important to me when I was there, at least you know initially to you know to take both both elements seriously. So I think they you know they were they they respected that a lot. Why was it important to you to take both seriously? You know, I mean, I was dorming at the time, so you know, I felt like you know, I I was in both schools, and I felt like if I was attending both schools, then you know, I should you know, I it was more than just you know on paper, you know, um, you know, I I, I felt you know it was important if I was going to you know if I was going to decide to stay in yeshiva, then you know I should play the part as well. Um, you know, I was trying to be as sincere as possible about it, about the, the choice. You know, I felt if I was going to be in college, you know, full time, I could you know I didn't need to you know be in the base matterish. So. Did your studies of English literature inform at all your studies of sacred text? Um, not that much, honestly. Uh, a little bit. It, it might have been the other way around, if anything. Um, I spent a year uh, studying, there was this great professor in Brooklyn College, uh, Carl Beckson, who was a real stickler and everyone hated him, but he was uh, an expert in Oscar Wilde and he had written many books on Oscar Wilde. So I actually took a, about a year and off almost and did some classes, like sort of independent study and research with him uh, on some Oscar Wilde stuff. So that was kind of neat. Then that was sort of like a, something I would have done in Yeshiva. Like if you get kind of off on a tangent on an issue, you can kind of you know, take some time off and get like delve into it. So there were sort of some similarities in that way. Who gave you a harder time, your fellows at the yeshiva for going to Brooklyn College and studying English Lit, or your fellows at Brooklyn College for you going to yeshiva simultaneously? You know, it's it, <laughs> a funny question. It wasn't, you know, I think I was pretty accepted on both ends. Um, Brooklyn College, it, it's difficult because it's a commuter college, but there's not very much of a social scene. Uh, and I also, frankly, had a bit of a stunted growth because when I was in high school, when a lot of kids are kind of going out and doing their sort of high school dating, um, I never had that. Like, I didn't have that experience. So for me, it was, you know, I was suddenly, like, in college with girls, and it, um, you know, it was sort of a, it was a major eye-opener. But I never got, like, any ribbing from any, you know, I think the students in general, I mean, I didn't, maybe I'm being, like, you know, rose-colored glasses, but I, I thought that the, the students in both places, you know, were pretty accepting, um, especially in, in, in Yeshiva. Like, they were... Um, you know, I had a I had a class of forty, and they most of them are you know pretty religious, and I think a lot of them are probably like studying in Colwell now, and they were all they were all super respectful, and I you know actually because I was out of town again, like a lot of them had me over at their houses, and um, you know, and I, I was coming from a really strong you know high school education as well, so I you know I, fit, I it wasn't difficult to sort of fit into their world. How old were you when you first went to a secular party where people were getting drunk and perhaps doing drugs <laughs> and fucking up? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a big party guy, so, uh, you know, probably older, you know, probably like early 20s. Uh, and, I'm much and, more and what did you, yeah, yeah. What'd Sorry, you think of that scene? Sorry, what did you think of that scene? I mean, the, getting exposed to that, like what normal college kids were doing? You know, it's an eye-opener, you know, but I, believe it or not, um, like even in, like even in Taos, you know, um, you know, when I was in high school, I mean, there wasn't any like heavy drugs or anything like that, but like, you know, smoking was a big deal and, and drinking was kind of a big deal. So, you know, it wasn't, you know, it, believe it or not, you know, kids are going to be kids wherever they are. And it wasn't necessarily like, I, you know, I was very doe-eyed, I think, when it came to relationships and women and girls and but, you know, when it came to that other stuff, like, it just didn't make, you know, was, you know, I don't think it made much of a difference. How did girls react to you in, in college, uh, say, Brooklyn College, when they, you know, found out you're also going to yeshiva and you come from this, you know, very religious background? You know, it was weird. I didn't, I, I didn't connect at all with any of the girls in college. Um, I, I think it's also partially, and this is sort of me being, like, stereotypical, but I, a lot of the girls that were there we're very like very like Brooklyn and very flatbush, and it, it's not a world that I connect with at all. Um, you know, a lot of them were like I knew each other from before, so they were sort of had these groups, and they would like come to class, they'd come in late, they'd be like talking during class, you know. And I I, I took my studies at least you know especially like the lit stuff pretty seriously, 
Um, and uh, frankly, there wasn't that many girls, like Jewish girls or any girls, like, um, you know, Jewish girls specifically in, like, literature courses. So it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't have much, I, you know, it wasn't that social, frankly. Um, what, so, I, yeah. I haven't spent much time in Brooklyn. So what are the characteristics of people who grew up in Brooklyn and Flatbush that you don't care for? You know, that's a, that's a super hard question. I've spent many a time, like, in conversations trying to articulate it. I, I just haven't been able to. Uh, it's difficult. I, I think there's uh, – tough to explain. It's really tough to explain. There's, there's some element of um, – there's, uh, there's some element of, like, a cookie-cutter element where there's not a lot of personality. Um, they go to schools, and they're sort of taught one thing. But they have a sort of a very specific mentality about what they want to do or who they want – to um, associate with, um, there seems to be like a serious lack of character almost, of like interests. Um, they all sort of seem to like, kind of like the same things, dress the same way. Uh, and, it, it's, and then also sort of, there's also sort of a very um, this bizarre attitude where they feel like if you talk to them or socially or like friendly to them in any way, they feel like, you know, you're proposing to them someone and they're like very off put. They like are very like offended almost when people reach out to them socially. Um, that's kind of a very common trait. Um, which makes things like any conversation like just super awkward and uncomfortable. Um, you know, I, it's hard. It's hard to explain. I, I don't know. Like it's, it's just not. Um, you know, they're also looking for very specific things, and and they're they're very like comfortable like in a very specific world, and anything that's that's sort of slightly skewered from that um, makes them you know just they they're confused by. Um, you know, I had one instance where like it's sort of legendary, but we had we took summer classes and. There was um, the way it worked in Brooklyn College a lot. A lot. I'm sure this is like this in a lot of colleges, but especially in Brooklyn College, and especially because it's so insular. But they would have a lot of um, a lot of the, t- the teachers that we would take would take. They would have like the old tests from, and I forgot they use like a Hebrew term that they use it. Mithora, that's what they call it. I think that's what they call it in, in Aries or all. <laughs> so yeah. So we we took a class once, and, and I still remember this. It was. Um, uh, you know, like this one girl, I mean, it was a bunch of like Jewish in the class, and you know, we're all kind of a little bit friendly, not very much, you know, limited. And they're also super competitive, you know, I think they always feel, you know, they were always trying to, you know, score higher, that kind of thing. But one of the girls had, one of the Jewish girls had, it was clear it had like a lot of the old tests. And we had some, we didn't have all of them. And, you know, we had kind of approached her just casually, hey, can you help us out? You know, we want to make sure, you know, we're not missing anything, you know, can you do us a favor? And... And she, you know, she totally jerked us around, like completely, you know, was like, oh, maybe you can come, like she said, like, I'm busy tonight. And we were like, oh, we'll come by your house. We'll pick it up. You know, we went all out. You know, we wanted to make sure, you know, we got this to cover our asses. Um, and she just kind of blew us off. And it turned out that it, there was another guy in the class who wasn't Jewish at all. And it kind of heard us talking. And he totally had, you know, bailed us out. He gave us the stuff that he had. And, you know, I was really upset. I was really pissed off. And I think it taught me a lesson. And I really, and I, frankly, I kind of gave it into her afterwards. But I was pointing out that, like, you know, you know, look, I mean, you know, you can do whatever you want, obviously. And, you know, you're not, you don't force to do anything. But, you know, like, I've always been of the mind that you kind of help each other out. You're Jewish, you're religious. You know, if somebody asks you for that, you know, it's not going to make a difference in the, you know, in any, in any shape or form in the class. You know, like, you try to help people out. And it was just sort of, I was shocked. I was taken aback that somebody not Jewish would go above and beyond to help someone, and you know somebody who was was being a jerk about it, frankly. Uh, when you're talking about characteristics of people from Brooklyn and Flatbush, uh, I assume you're talking about Orthodox Jews. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Does the yeshiva education uh, make? a person any less likely to cheat in college? Absolutely, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. I think there's a lot of pressure. I mean, I think I grew up with a lot of pressure, so I think there's always sort of this, you know, you have to succeed, you know, like whatever it takes, you know, and if it takes, you know, kind of cutting some corners, you're going you're gonna to do it. You know, you, you, you know, it's expected that you're going to do well, and you've got to answer the bell. Wait, so a yeshiva education makes you more likely to cheat? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think your, your yeshiva teachers would, would say if they were, you know, given evidence that this is true? I mean, I, I think it goes to the stronger point. You know, it's a yeshiva, you know, it's, we're talking about tests. But I think, the, like, the more religious you get, that sometimes the mentality is, like, you know, you cut corners, you're not. I mean, this is a larger conversation and a bit of a stereotype. But, 
you know, 